I want to give you a sense of optimism about the Rams' so-called remodel. Nasir Adderley stuns the NFL, sports writers only, by retiring. And talking USC basketball, I've noticed, tends to bring out the beta male in a lot of us. Good morning. I'm James. This is your daily dose of sports and snark for the greatest sports city in the world, Los Angeles. This is the Faithful Angelino's Morning Report. It's March 17th, 2023, St. Patrick's Day. Please note, I am not wearing any green whatsoever. There's a reason for that. The Irish don't go out of their way to wear green on St. Patrick's Day. We've culturally appropriated it. I know this, I'm of Irish descent. The Irish love us. They just think we're silly for doing stuff like that. Just to let you know. But let's all enjoy the day. If you like the content that we put out about LA sports, clickety-clack the like button. Clickety-clack the subscribe button. There's a notification bell. Hit that, it lets you know we drop new content. Sharing is caring, let people know we exist. And by all means, comment. It's a lovely day. Let's talk a little sports. Before we go through the news and notes, look at the scoreboard. UCLA basketball absolutely took care of business. They defeated UNC Asheville 50, I'm sorry, 86-53. The Bruins are gonna be playing Northwestern at 5.40 p.m. on Saturday. Four different LA Kings scored. They beat the Daylights out of the Columbus Blue Jackets, which makes me happy, four to one. Meanwhile, today, as I update, USC is playing Michigan State. This game has definite maybe written on it for both sides. We'll talk about that in just a moment. And Dallas is going to play the Lakers. Luka Doncic is out. Kyrie Irving is questionable. With a series of roster moves over the last week, the LA Rams went from $14 million over the salary cap to about $15 million under the cap. They did it with the trade of Jalen Ramsey, cutting Leonard Floyd, uh, Bobby Wagner, all of which extremely painful. The Rams defense is not going to be that good next year. And the return being $15 million under, it's eh, it's okay. But the team remodel that they've been talking about, it's next year they're looking for. The Rams at this point are $61.2 million under the salary cap. For remodeling, that's a lot of trips to lows. To give you some perspective, if it were, if that salary cap space were this year as opposed to next year, the Rams would have the third most salary cap space of any team in the NFL. And if you play your cards right, you can use that to a lot of advantages. That is somebody else's bill to pay now, this year and next year. So if you're looking for optimism for a uh, quick rebound, that would count. I, the key, I would say, for the Rams though, is not to lose their composure now. And they seem to be pretty adamant about not wanting to do that. So when they're talking about signings, they're not going to be sexy. For example, they're going to be bringing back offensive lineman Coleman Shelton on a two-year deal. It is the first Rams so-called addition, which is really just bringing somebody back. Uh, it's not an ad. To me, it's just a desperate, please don't leave me 2 a.m. text to an ex-girlfriend when that girlfriend is like a six and a half at best. So glad Coleman Shelton's back. It's not really that much of a difference maker for next year. Safety Nick Scott has signed with Cincinnati, which begs the question, what? I mean, Scott is 27, right? He spent four years with the Rams, and in those four years, what has he accomplished? Four picks. So, and not exactly, I think about 100 solo tackles, which means he's averaging about maybe less than two a game. So not really much of an impact player which makes you wonder why a Super Bowl contender like the Bengals went out of their way to go get him. It's not a get. I mean, at least when the Chargers let Nasir Adderley go, there's an interesting story with it. What do you say we get to that interesting story? Former Bolt safety Nasir Adderley is hanging up his cleats. He said he is retiring after just four years in the NFL. He said he's doing it due to his health. 
Now to say something like that puts all the sports writers in fren frenzy mode because man, do they love to talk about CTE. They love to talk about concussions. They're trying to advance a narrative that how the Pro Bowls turned into flag football. Maybe every game should go to flag football. Wouldn't that be fun? No, it wouldn't. But regarding Adderley, he's saying it's his health. And I don't want to question the man's toughness, okay? I want to be fair about this. But he hasn't had a series of head injuries. He's been, he does have health issues, but it's in, his, it's in his extremities. It's in his shoulders, his arms, his legs. And don't get me wrong, pain is pain. So if you think you have enough money and you want to get out of that, if you want to get out of football, I get it. But before anybody starts telling you that Nasir Adderley is having the same issues that Junior Seau has had, tap the brakes on that. I don't question the man's toughness, but I have to admit I will question his effectiveness. He temporarily lost his starting job last year. He didn't even start the playoff game. The man, we talked about how Nick Scott has had only four picks in his Rams career. Nasir Adderley in four years has three. So the Chargers were not likely to bring him back. And yesterday was day three of NFL free agency, which means all the big money is gone. So he wasn't going to get a big time contract. Maybe the reason he's retiring is a combination of his health and the fact that he's not going to get the bag of money. Just a thought. By the way, Aloha Gilman is going to get the gig as Adderley departs. The Chargers brought back defensive lineman Morgan Fox for two years. He stepped up for the Chargers big time when three defensive linemen were lost to season engine ending injuries last year. He's had, uh, he had six and a half sacks last year. And by the way, uh, among the top 10 free agents, according to CBS Sports, the top 10 free agents available, that would include Chargers cornerback Bryce Callahan and edge rusher Kyle Van Noy. They are still on the board. All I can tell you about today's USC basketball game in March Madness against Michigan State is that if Vince Iwachukwu had played the entire game, maybe there's a post presence that would make the Trojans offense spread out. Now that didn't happen obviously because of the heart issues that Iwachukwu had. He missed at least half the year. So Michigan State, they just have to defend the perimeter well. And that's what makes this game so damn beta male because you're gonna, nobody's gonna be in the low post. Nobody's muscling up. This is gonna look like a rec league game with everybody just chucking up threes because nobody wants, to, nobody wants to take a hit in the low post. And because nobody wants to take a hit in the low post and because nobody knows who's gonna be seeking their threes today, all the sports writers have gone beta male. Eh, maybe the Trojans can, I don't know, maybe Michigan State. Eh. Nobody wants to grow a pair over this particular game. The one downside I will say for Michigan State is they have been in March Madness for 25 consecutive years under Tom Izzo, and that's terrific, don't get me wrong. But for the last three years, they haven't gotten out of the first weekend, so maybe the Trojans could upset them. I, it's all whiny. Nobody knows what the hell's going on. Bottom line is the game is a bit of a coin flip, but the matchup tends to favor Michigan State. Let's stick with USC while we're at it. Are you ready to spit, spit out your breakfast vittles all over the countertop? Well, three incoming transfers to the defense actually said that they came to the Trojans because of Alex Grinch's defensive schemes. <clears throat> what? Quote, I can, <laughs> I can move to the opposite uh, A gap or move to the outside. They're asking me to do a lot of moving, said Kion Bars. He likes that. Added Jack Sullivan. They told me I could be used anywhere on the line and that I could be very versatile for them. The atmosphere here, the coaches, the culture, unquote. Now, how does moving around all over the place matter? According to Mason Cobb, another incoming transfer, quote, B 
being able to have a bunch of stunts, it leaves the linebackers untouched. That sounded really good to me, unquote. So believe it or not, despite all of the maladies that USC's defense gave their fans last year, Alex Grinch is apparently a draw for USC uh, uh, transfers. Tony Gonsolin has resumed throwing for the Dodgers, but he hasn't been able to put a lot of weight on his injured left ankle. So he's been throwing, but it's long toss. It's not on the mound. It is probable that he opens up the year on the injured list. Now a writer estimated who the Dodgers might look at. They have nine options in the minors. The bottom five, they're listed as options. They're not likely to come. The top four are the usual suspects, if you will. Ryan Pepio, Michael Grove, Gavin Stone, Bobby Miller, Bobby Miller. And I remember from last year, I called Pepio's name a lot in the daily update, so I leaned towards him. Noah Syndergaard threw 60 pitches for the Dodgers yesterday against the Chicago White Sox. He, is allowed, he allowed one unearned run in five innings of work. Dave Roberts loved it. Very efficient, he said. Everything was in the zone, unquote. Guess who's getting popular? Not me, of course not. I mean, I'm married now. I'm starting to put on weight that I didn't have before. No, 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 no. Popular is the Lakers' Austin Reeves, and he is going to be a restricted free agent this summer. So having said that, it sounds like, oh my God, we're gonna lose him just like we lost all those other players a couple of years ago. Reeves wants to stay and the Lakers say they wanna keep him. They are not looking to repeat the gaffe of letting Alex Caruso go. Reeves, by the way, it's not that he sets the world on fire, he's just efficient. He gives them something steady every day and that is 11.5 point, uh, points per game. Again, doesn't set the world on fire, but you know you're getting those 11 to 12 points each and every night. Since the All-Star break, the LA Kings hold the second best record in the NHL at 12-2-2 with a plus 22 goal differential. They might be a threat, guys. They're peaking at the right time as the cliche goes. And don't look now, but Quentin Byfield has looked like a legit NHLer now. He's on the line. He's uh, Instead of being a center, they've made him a winger, put him up on the first line next to Andre Kopitar and Adrian Kempe. After he was called, now after the Byfield was recalled from a minor league stint, he's played in 32 games and had 16 points, including an assist last night. But you let me know what you think in the comments thread. Do you think that the Rams are gonna be able to rebound in a year with 61 million in cap space. <clears throat> Do you think that Nasir Adderley hanging up his cleats is the right call, even though it's his call to make? And what about USC basketball? And don't forget to subscribe to Faithful Angelinos. We're talking LA sports every single day here. Thank you for watching. I'm James. We'll be back tomorrow. Faithful Angelinos is a Kian Corte El Queso production. Take care.